Well, good day everybody. This is Jesse here from 2J Ranch Horses and I would like to do a series of videos um, discussing how think, horses think and learn and I'd also like to talk about the two main causes that are at the root of a whole myriad of problems that I see people dealing with when working with their horses. And those two things are the horses are either not speaking the same language or they have two different agendas. Now this is not a how-to uh, horse training video. It's not going to be in-depth on any training techniques. It's more about sharing my philosophies about horsemanship. Um, and in this video, we're going to discuss uh, the language of horsemanship. Um, and I'd like to uh, advocate on behalf of the horse, if you will. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Hola, entiendes español? Now I've been trying to learn Spanish over the last few years and uh, I've compared horsemanship to a language in the past but in the process of trying to learn a new language it's really made me think more about the analogy of horsemanship as a language. Horsemanship is a fairly unique language in the fact that it's the art of communication between two different species, horses and humans. Now, um, trying to communicate with another species has a whole set of different challenges than merely just trying to learn the language and cultural differences. Um, horses are totally, have a totally different thought process than humans. Uh, we need to really understand how they think and learn as a species rather than just uh, applying our human thinking to horses. For this reason, I don't really like to use human analogies when talking about horsemanship. Um, it creates all kinds of anthropomorphism and can cause a lot of uh, misconceptions but for the sake of uh, that's a whole nother topic for another video but for the sake of getting my point across I will use a little bit of a, a comparison here. Now I'm learning a second language a bit later in life. I didn't grow up speaking Spanish. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of Spanish influences. Um, and so I've learned actually the bulk of my Spanish on a little app called Duolingo. I don't know if any of you have heard of that, but um, that's what I've used. I don't know if it's the best there is out there, but I've enjoyed it. It's helped me a lot. Um, it's been really hard for me, but in a way I think it's been good for my horsemanship because I think about how hard it must be for our horses to you know, learn to speak our language fluently. And now when I see horses struggling to come up with the right answer, um, I can kind of sympathize because I've tried, you know, having a conversation with Spanish speakers and I find myself struggling to understand and make myself understood. Um, and if you've ever been in a foreign country surrounded solely by foreign speakers and you know little to nothing of the, of the, the language, um, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's, it's a little intimidating. This first tip is more geared towards people that are shopping for horses, but um, first of all, horsemanship is primarily body language. It's made up of two parts, the horse's body language and the human's body language. In my experience trying to learn Spanish, due to my lack of understanding of the language, um, I've found that the more English a person understands, the better communication I have with a Spanish-speaking person. Now this would kind of seem like a no-brainer, but when it comes to horsemanship, often people who don't really have a good grasp of horsemanship, a good understanding of the horse's language, um, they don't often understand the importance of the horse being, able, being very fluent in the human language to be able to fill in the gaps where the human lacks understanding. Um, the greener the human, the better broke the horse needs to be. And, and the same goes for on the other side of the coin. The more experienced the horseman, the greener the horse can be. Now for a lot of people, it's a fairly one-sided affair. They expect the horse to be trained and understand them, but little effort is made on their behalf to understand the horse's language. So when shopping for a horse, I think it's very important to remain objective uh, about your level of experience and your ability uh, to understand and communicate with horses. Better yet, you could have a professional evaluate your riding and your abilities and match you up with a horse that's suitable for your level of understanding.
Now the following three tips are more about training. Um, this is about saying it in a different way. Now one of the most frustrating things that I've found when trying to speak Spanish is when I don't understand and someone keeps repeating the, themselves the exact same way over and over again. Um, but one of the things that I've noticed is that I can communicate way better in Spanish with people that I know than just random strangers. Um, the reason for this is because my Spanish vocabulary is very limited and people who know me have picked up on my vocabulary and what I understand and they use those words. So if they can switch out some of the words or you know say some similar words with the same meanings, um, maybe break it down a little bit or explain it or use hand gestures or charades or something, um, that can really help clear up the confusion. And I think the same is true when working with horses. Um, when our horses don't understand, sometimes just changing how we ask or breaking it down into smaller and easier steps can be more effective than asking the same way over and over again and not getting the right answer. To quote the renowned horseman Brian Newbert, we need to present it to them in a way that they can understand. Have you ever been asked a question that you didn't know the answer to, but you kind of guessed uh, something that seemed obvious to you? It was kind of logical and it happened to be the correct answer? Well, that's kind of what we're trying to do with our horses. In the beginning, when they're first learning, they're just guessing at everything. Um, when we ask them something new, we want to set the situation up as best as possible so that what we want is the most logical answer. Then, with repetition over time and reinforcing that idea, it becomes common knowledge to them. And now the horse has a little more understanding that he can use to formulate educated guesses in the future, um, you know, when he encounters another new situation. Um, I'd like to quote Martin Black in his book, Evidence-Based Horsemanship, learning begats learning. And I found this to be no different when learning a new language. The more you learn, the easier it becomes to learn. But having said that, inexperienced horses that are operating in that guessing game mindset all the time will likely be a little bit uptight and nervous, um, <clears throat> and they're not going to be there for you. They might be a little bit tight and bothered, um, and in a situation when you really need them for you, that's when they might fall apart on you. Now I'd like to inject a couple of side notes in here, putting a horse in a situation to where he needs to know more than he really does, um, at best is a good way to shake his confidence, um, or worse, a uh, good way to get into a wreck or even possibly ruin the horse for life. I'd also like to add this, that in contrast to how we say something different when a horse isn't understanding, um, saying it louder or more aggressively is not going to help at all. Chances are the horse is probably a little bit um, nervous and uncertain to begin with, when he's exposed to new things, um, but turning up the volume or getting more aggressive uh, when they don't understand is like the equivalent of yelling, someone yelling at you in a foreign language. Not only are you still not going to understand them, but you know the intimidation is going to shut down your ability to think clearly. The more we can minimize fear and confusion while keeping them curious and engaged, um, the smoother things are going to go. Now because I'm not very fluent in Spanish, when speaking to somebody in Spanish, uh, I need the other person to speak slowly and clearly in order for me to comprehend anything at all. Uh, my recall is slow, I'm not always very accurate, um, I have to think about a lot about what I'm trying to say or what's being said. Sometimes I say the wrong word or I understand wrong. Both horses and human brains alike uh, can only absorb so much information at a time. Um, and information overload followed by too much time to forget will only result in the horse's brain just dumping the information and not retaining it. Now forgetting is a big part of learning. Uh, the more frequent relearning happens, the better uh, it will be retained in the long-term memory. This is what trainers refer to as muscle memory. When practice takes place over a longer period of time, um, the horse's recall will be sharp and correct. But horses that haven't practiced something frequently enough over a long enough period of time, they can't retain the information very well 
in the long term and <clears throat> will require more time to think about it when we ask them something and they're going to be more likely to give us the wrong answer. I feel it's actually fairly inconsiderate of, of us uh, to send a horse for training for a month or two and expect them to be fluent. Now for those who expect a lot out of a month or two, I would suggest downloading the Duolingo app and take a couple of months of lessons in a foreign language and then go to a foreign country and you know try to communicate solely in, in your newfound language. And if you're like me, you'll be lucky if you'll be able to ask for a glass of water or where the bathroom is, all the while just butchering the pronunciation. But yet this is exactly what we're doing with one or two month cold starting deal. Um, as stated earlier, only those with enough experience to be able to balance the understanding can fully benefit from just one month or two. Kids who grow up learning a second language seem to learn a lot easier than someone like myself trying to learn a second language as an adult. And horses are no different, as stated earlier. Learning begets learning, so horses that develop good learning habits at a young age uh, are easier to train and learn faster than horses that mature without as much mental stimulation. I remember when I was quite young, my dad would put me on yearling colts with a pony saddle. Um, he would, at first he would just lead them around with me on them and then he started lunging them around with me on them. Um, pretty quick he'd have me steering them around a little bit on the lunge line and then he'd turn me loose in a round pen. Well, the whole process was actually pretty smooth um, and we had almost no trouble at all. And Later on in life I got busy and the colts got older before we started them and I started to realize that it was more work. I found in my experiences that it's easier to develop them both physically and mentally if you start them younger. And the same is true for people wanting to learn to ride as older adults. Um, without any experience as kids, it's a little bit harder. Um, it's still doable and very much a worthwhile endeavor, um, but it might be a little bit harder and might take a little longer than someone that grew up around it. Well folks, that's all for now. I thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, till next time, Dios te bendiga.